All right, welcome back everybody to the MVP podcast. We're here on a, a sunny Friday after some like gloomy two weeks of 50s. We're actually up in the 70s today, which is pretty nice. It's gorgeous out. Yeah, it's nice being in the house and not freezing. Yes. Like I've been like long underwear, Under Armour, everything, and then jeans and sweatshirt for like the past two weeks. So today I'm actually in a short sleeve shirt. Yay. Didn't abandon the dirty jeans, but. That's okay, Marcus. Well, yeah. we'll let you stay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're sitting on opposite sides of the table. I smell like a, a high school locker room right now, <laughs> which is kind of gross. But um, I came right from drywalling to do this. So, um, yeah, we can't send odor over the airwaves. So Thank goodness. I know. I actually can't smell him, so all is good <laughs> in the world. Um, but what we wanted to bring to you today, um, we've had some guests on. We've had our intro, uh, giving a little bit of a background. Um, and then we've had, obviously, our guests on talking about their... Uh, specific niches uh, that they're in within real estate but we wanted to kind of peel it back and go into like how this all got started not so much like a background I'm going to touch on that a little bit because it leads into where we are today but more of just a pullback into how I got into real estate and where we're at right now just kind of a snapshot um, in time and then where we're going to so um, I mean I have to go into the past. It's not going to be a repeat of the intro, but... um, So I guess I get to ask the first question. Yeah. How did you get here? Where did you come from? That's my question. I know. Yes. Um, So I I got here, I will call it by chance. So um, I knew in... When I went to college, my living situation, it was a stipend through my scholarship to live at an apartment in that was my first taste of living in an apartment was in college. So as I'm living there, I kind of thought like, okay, how does this all work? How does the system work? I'm system orientated. So, (laughs) um, I wanted to figure out how the apartment complex complex worked. And from there, there's always like a little seed Did ever think I was going to own property and rent (laughs) it. Never. Um, but it fascinated me. Um, fast forward, uh, five years after college, um, I was, I did the baseball thing. I came back. First job was managing a gym, which was my first taste of like facility management, or that would be more the commercial space. Sure. Was like a commercial building, um, along with operations in terms of people and, and hours and payroll and all that stuff. So, um, that was my first taste of managing a building. And it was probably to this day, one of my most favorite jobs it's funny how we have the, our favorite jobs I yeah remember i do too yeah. yeah i mean it's not my favorite job i know what my favorite job was um i mean i'm doing it right now oh. but it, i'm saying employment <laughs> okay like right now okay. i'm not employed <laughs> right I just have my own right but it, when i was employed um i worked for a fundraising company will to this day be the best job i had in terms of me being an employee that's awesome um, it was outside sales that is that molded my um my work ethic, my, my drive, the grit type of it, because it was a gritty job, but I loved it. Um, so going back to the fitness center, managed that for, uh, two years. Uh, I would probably still have been there if it paid more, but it just (laughs) didn't. Um, and with the little one coming in, I took a job, uh, in customer service that was so mind numbing. It was 70 to 80 calls a day, just all incoming. So I'd have a headset like I'm wearing right now. <laughs> it beep. I'd have to say my intro, figure out what's going on. And it's usually like, where is my package or sure. what happened? This is damaged. Then I have to call the freight company to figure out what freight camp company it was or where it was in shipment. Like all those logistical things. Sure. So boring. Yeah. So I found myself like trying to get my mind going on stuff. So I was doing, um, uh, what is that? Not crossword puzzles okay so i was doing crossword puzzles i was like oh, i'm gonna learn to do ro- uh sudoku i love sudoku in I'm, between phone calls yeah and then one day i was leaning back on my chair doing a rubik's cube and i was like i can't do this anymore do you know that my son loves rubik's cubes he can teach me how to do the, i can't do the last layer I can't oh he can't do it either he can do the, the two by twos he loves okay. those but now he's on the three by threes and he can get one side and i think yeah. he got two sides have you seen the Rubik's Cube that change color now? It's no. the color one that like when you look at it left side, it's red, right side, it's blue. 
I it might, makes it so that, much more difficult. That might be I a, can't even get the original, so I'm not trying it. <laughs> that might be a good Christmas gift. Right? Um, See, so yeah, I'm, I'm leaning back in my chair. I'm doing the Rubik's Cube. Um, I know I'm there just for a paycheck. And I... I like look. I couldn't do it. I don't know if it was like the inner athlete in me that sure. was like, "There's no competition here." Yeah. There's no. I'm gonna get better. I can't answer that phone call better. <laughs> like it just comes into my headset. I figure out the issue. I let them know the news, and then it's done. And then it's the next one. Right. And I didn't like that there was no retention. There was no. All right. Chris called. Then I get to talk to Chris again. I get to like see him through his project, and then here's the completion. Right. It was. I got one little nugget of the whole project. Sure. Um, and it just wasn't satisfying. That's really it. Right. Like the, the people that were there were great. I still talked to three of the people that were there. Oh, wow. Like still friends. But in terms of that role, it just was not a fit. And mm -hmm. I was aware enough that it wasn't a fit. Sure. But with the little one at home, like you kind of take It's tough when you have little ones. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I could leave my job and be happy and not do that. But then sure. also like how do we pay for things and right. feed ourselves. Right. So I was doing that. Um, while I was doing that, I was searching for like, what am I going to do? What's my career? Because that was a job. Sure. And I always compartmentalize job and career. Right. That was a job. Um, I'm trying to look for something that's going to, I don't know, like make a spark or make me feel like it's rewarding. Light that fire in your yeah. belly. Mm -hmm. Um. And all along that time, I was still managing a bar downtown that was phasing its way out. So I was like, all right, I'm going to have some time open. Um, we weren't financially in a position for me just to do one thing. So right. I was always like, all right, what can I do that's um, educational, financially beneficial, and it gives me reward? Um, and I actually connected because um, I started driving for... That was the next step after the <laughs> bar closed. I started driving for this company that... Um, you basically be a chauffeur. Yeah. I guess. It's not an Uber. Right. Because I'm not driving my car. But so I'd take people here and there. And I drove one guy. We were going down to Indiana. And that's a long drive. Yeah. So it was <laughs> things like that. Like I was driving like two, three hours to places because they were working in the back. Or um, that's crazy. Yeah. I took some people down to Indiana for like a festival because they couldn't drive back because it was like a it was like a music drinking festival. Got it. Um, and I'm glad I was driving their car because there was. Uh, some stuff in the back didn't hold it all down just all over the seats oh no so um so I was driving this one guy down I believe we were going somewhere around Gary and I was like oh how are you doing it was all small talk and he was like oh I'm I started my own company he was actually working um for an appliance company he ended up leaving that job to start this and it was uh if you can picture light brights yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, So yeah. they're wall-sized ones. So he's That's making so like cool. 10 by 15 boards what? of these things. So I would go like, he's telling me all this stuff. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. Um, it sounds interesting. He's like, yeah, I started up a few months ago. It's like, do you have any room for me to help you? Like not expecting commission or right. payment. Just can I help you? It sounds fun. <laughs> um, so I started doing some of his back office stuff for a few months. And that was my first taste of contractor kind of self-employed sure um and that like sparked it that Got was like it. i need to do this this is what i want to do not that specific niche but like right. i want to be self-employed that is where i get my reward that's where i get my my competitive fire back so ever since then i was like all right i need to think of something i can do on my own it doesn't need to be original idea but I want to do something on my own. I feel you there. I have to be self-employed too. I would yeah. go crazy. I mean, I tried not to be self-employed. Yeah. That lasted all of mm, five months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the one thing I'll say is I, I didn't know the, I don't know, the, the stress of being self-employed. Right. Like I didn't get that. I, I had the butterflies and the sprinkles and like, <laughs> oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And the rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> and like now that I'm in it, if I wanted to work less in a day, I would get a W-2. Yeah. I would go back, be employed. It's great. Sure. You clock in, you do your stuff, you clock out, you forget about what you leave your stuff at home or at work. You come home, mm -hmm. do your home stuff. Right. It's not my life. Um, but I enjoy this way more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
so worked with him for a few months and then he actually offered me to come on full time, but financially I couldn't do it. So I had to pass that up. He hired somebody full time. So I kind of left that. Sure. Um, and then from there it was, I have to get back into it. I have to do something on my own. Um, I am reading every like mindset book, every business book that I can get my hands on. Mm -hmm. Um, I downloaded that Libby app where you can get books for free. So if you, if you belong to a library (laughs) or if you don't go to one, um, you put in your card number and then you can go on and you can rent audiobooks. Oh, nice. I love audiobooks. So, um, from there I downloaded that I'm listening to audiobooks. I'm reading books. Um, the, the first book that really like tipped the scale for me that was like, I am, I've been doing what the 98% of people do and I'm frustrated with it Mm -hmm. yet. I'm doing the same thing that the 98% do. (laughs) It was rich dad, poor dad. I read that book and like that. I was so frustrated with what I was doing that it made me completely like stop what I was doing, my patterns and try to get like, I fully dove into the book. You know, it's funny. I work with another realtor and she referenced that book in a book that she actually wrote. And it's funny that you just mentioned that book yep. too. I'm like, I know that book. Yep. It is. So many entrepreneurs will say that is their, their book that huh. took the scale. I recommend it for anybody to read. Even if you're not trying to go self-employed, even if you're not trying to do your own thing, it's just a good book to look at, uh, your own finances, the sure. way that you carry your life, the way that your household is run. It was just a good overall book. Oh, I just run my household myself. My husband just follows along. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that one really sparked it. And then the second book that really impacted me, and these will probably forever be the top two books I recommend to anybody, is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a... F- oh, <laughs> love yeah. it. it. It it basically is, you have 100% battery power every day. In every little thing that goes through your mind is taking percentages out of your battery. So what are you going to give your percentages to? In a nutshell, I'll, that's sure. all. I'll do it. And he has, it's very vulgar. It is. Uh, <laughs> then I definitely need it. Like the first chapter, or first two chapters, it, I literally was laughing and almost in tears. Because it was <laughs> how he explains things that are so simple that we think about in his rational way of thinking about it to try and change or let you see a different perspective was just so freeing that I was like, he's right. I think I definitely need that book. I'm like in my head, I'm thinking yeah. of all the things. I'm like, that yeah, one is yeah. free on Libby. Ooh. So walk over to the library. I'm, I belong to Oconomowoc. They yeah. bridge between like eight different ones. I do too. I think I tried joining Libby and I was just having issues with signing up for it. I don't know. Oh, I I'll figure it yeah. out. Subtle art, great book. He takes like simple little thought processes that we think about every day, gives you a, a real just abrupt, abrasive like (laughs) look at a different perspective and it just made sense to me yeah um which like accelerated the fire and i was like i have to find something um so all through that i was uh recently single father trying to think of how can i get out of my nine to five um i was at home one night and i was like okay i need to get a new job i don't know what it is at the time, I'm trying to think of what was going through my head because I had a, a sport business uh, management and psychology degree. So I was like, okay, w- those I know were my thing. Sure. How can I get into this? So I went on to Indeed.com and I literally put in, it was either sports or I put in, it was either sports or like management. I have one sub- of the two keywords. I have submitted so many applications on Indeed.com. Like it's just stupid. I look yeah. back and I'm like, oh, maybe every once in a while I get an interview. But I think it's like interesting once you're self-employed, how kind of unmotivated you are yeah. to submit those applications. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it got it got old, and I, I mean, I hope I never have to do it again. Right. I'm sure I will in the future. Um, and I'll get to that part. Okay. Because that's my ending. That's like, where do I want to go? Okay. So that's, I'll leave a cliffhanger the there. cliffhanger. Okay. So at the time, um, I was out of that customer service. I found an outside sales job. So I was driving, um, selling facility service material to commercial business owners. Got it. So 
um, I was doing that <clears throat> miserable. I'd come home and I was just like, I, I don't know if I can wake up to go to work tomorrow. Do you feel a little dead inside? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like the night that I went in, I, I went into Indeed. I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know how many more days I have left to do that. Because at this point, I'm willing to risk not going back and just waiting until I find something or just like completely cutting it off and starting something. Oh, boy. Just cold turkey. And it scared me because obviously I've got the little one at home. Yeah. So um, I go on to Indeed. I hit in sports. I actually found something. It was an outside sales contract position. Oh, fun. So it was basically build your own business in your market. They had some like some rules to follow, but it's basically like do what you need to do to grow your business. Sure. And I was like, that's freedom. Yeah. I like that. And had the first interview. Second interview was with... Um, the owner of the company. And that's when I realized the company was like 40 to 50 people oh boy. across the country. Sure. So I was like, sweet. I see that's something that I like. I didn't like working for the bigger right. national companies where there's thousands of people. For sure. Like I like to be able to like call up the owner and say, Hey, this is what's going on. Or yeah. call somebody that can actually figure out my issue. Um, so it was a small company startup, um, started on the West coast, started there. And that was, with how scared I was to start that sure and not to have a normal every two week paycheck absolutely and work on commission and set my own hours and wake myself up and call it quits when I call it quits not when the day is done nerve wracking yikes but it was like the best transition into where I'm at right now because sure. it taught me like the work ethic it taught me to do things that make you uncomfortable it taught me how to lose more so than sports did because sports oh, wow. were like, oh, I lost that game or, oh, I lost that pitch or mm -hmm. lost that situation. This is like, OK, I, I lost like money for my family. Yeah. So it was a different kind of losing. But it taught me to lose um, and follow through. It was everything that I was looking for in terms of employment. Sure. They had it. And it was in sports. It was working with coaches, it was working with schools. I enjoyed it so much. Um and I worked there for about three and a half years. Oh, wow. During that three and a half years, like in and out, I was still always like rolling around. Okay, I got to start something. I have to do something on my own. I don't know what it is. I had started um, like a network marketing thing and that just wasn't, it's not for me. Okay. Some people kill it and they love it. Just wasn't for me. Got it. Um, and then I bought material to start a online uh, marketing. So like wholesaling basically Got online it. wholesaling went through courses bought the material didn't like it so then i cut that out and then um i tried i was like okay i i've got skill in baseball so like <laughs> let's try to do like some training sure so like i was picking up clients training um like youth anywhere from i don't know eight to high school a oh couple college but yeah um that was fun but all of that i realized because i went back to that rich dad poor dad like, is this something that's sustainable or is it something that is going to make you And the one thing that he delineates is rich and wealthy. Is that going to make you rich or is that going to make you wealthy? And he kind of goes into like what makes you both. OK. And it wasn't long standing. So if I don't show up to train that person, I don't get paid. Right. If I don't reach out to get that person to sign up again to come see me, I don't get paid. Mm hmm. So I didn't like the transactional method of that stuff. So okay. I was like, all right, what's something that I can do that's residual? Because mm -hmm. that's where like true, in my mind, right. wealth comes from, where you can get residual income coming in and you can build on that. For sure. Um, and then I was like, I, I mean that I remember back in college, that apartment thing was intriguing. So like, mm. I just want to learn about that. So yeah. I bought um, a few books on real estate and then everything the floodgates just open you really like your books don't you i love reading <laughs> it is like some people like watching sports i didn't watch the game last night <gasps> what at all i don't remember the last like football game even baseball like baseball's my sport yeah i don't remember the last baseball game i watched me too which is kind of sad oh my gosh but yeah i'm either reading or listening to an audiobook or like catching up on stuff at how at my house that i <laughs> don't get to throughout the week because i like there. reading but i read like trashy like it, essentially it'd be trashy tv in book form see i can't get into like <laughs> sci-fi or fiction like i want like history or which is 
funny because that was the worst history. You ask any of my teachers about my history as I'm going through school, awful. Oh, I would have failed. My husband was a history minor, though, so he's very smart with it. I love it now, though. Like, I'll listen to history podcasts and read history books. It's fascinating I'd rather be shot in the head. (laughs) (laughs) For some reason, that's just what I get enjoyment doing. Um, So there's a few podcasts that I'm currently listening to but um so going back to it i was like i need to find something that is going to build wealth i don't i don't want to be rich that's mm-hmm. not something i'm in it for to be i don't i do <laughs> i don't if i if i can do what i want to do throughout my day and get the things that i need to get done have a little bit for extra sure and my bank accounts at zero at the end it's a great day awesome so it wasn't like the rich thing rich things like a uh a secondary thing to it okay like i wanted something that's rewarding i've been in so many jobs that were just so mind-numbing mm-hmm. that i needed something rewarding that's like my number one and then the payment comes second like that'd be great got it um so i needed something to, to build wealth and rich dad poor dad talked about real estate um a few other podcasts that i listened to talked about real estate um and then i i was listening to I cannot remember his name, but he was saying about like the top 10% of people, if you look through their portfolio, they're going to own real estate. So I was like, okay, they must be doing something right. Right. Like I'm going to investigate this a little more. Then I read on it for maybe a year before I even did anything on it. And then I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start listening to people that do it. And I went online and I was like, podcast about real estate real estate podcast, any keyword I could put together to try and find something (laughs) in bigger pockets came up. And at the time I was doing outside sales. So I was driving maybe three, three and a half hours a day. Okay. Yeah. So I would get through three podcasts a day. That would be some time. And it was all real estate. And I did that for like a year. So three hours a day for a year of just real estate, real estate, real estate, different mechanics. That's cool. Different situations, some tragedies, some like amazing projects that they did. Sure. So like I just kept listening to it and I was like, all right, I'm doing it. And the day that I decided like I'm going into real estate um, was the host of it was saying, there are so many people that fail or never get started. Mm -hmm. That's one question they always ask is, so what sets apart people from, so how do they actually phrase it? Something along the lines of, so what separates those who fail or give up to those who excel or something like that? So those who succeed. Yeah. yeah. And the guest that was on there was like the people that do it. Awesome. And I was like, oh man, I've been, I've been throwing up obstacles. Like I don't have enough money here or I don't have enough time here or um, I'm going to lose out on this opportunity and I'm going to not be able to do this. And I didn't realize it in the, t- in the moment, but I was literally talking myself from, out from doing it sure rather than just jumping in um and it's funny because every time when i was coaching i'd always ask the kids do you love winning or do you hate losing you have to pick one do you love winning (laughs) or do you hate losing because in my mind you're all along the same concept sure but one is looking at and polarizing towards the opportunity and one is trying to avoid the avoid the negative Mm -hmm. so um i'm always i love to win I'll lose nine times out of 10, but that one win is going to be so satisfying because that's my focus. Yeah. And I was literally concentrating on that 90% of losing. And I was like, I, I just need to do it. Yeah. So I went on, uh, I hadn't been pre-approved. I hadn't done any financing. I just was like, I went on and I was like, I want to look at this duplex and no way I went in, I walked in a duplex and the person who showed me the, the duplex was actually a broker. So I had talked to him about like why I wanted to get into it and what I wanted to do. And we connected, we had coffee after I actually jumped aboard. I was an agent for him. Oh. Um, and then ever since then it was just like all real estate. So I was doing my outside sales job. Um, that was, I mean, 40 hours a week, if not more. And then I'd come home, put my son to bed and then stay up, study, mm-hmm. research, and then do it again. Yep. Um, and then it just got to the point where I couldn't do both and I had sure. to decide and then jumped right into full-time real estate 
and haven't looked back since. That's awesome. What a yeah. great story. So it literally came from just, I feel like I hit rock bottom in terms of sure. employment. And I was like, something's got to give mm-hmm. and I can't do this forever. Right. Um, and I appreciate everything that I learned along the way. And that's the one thing like I don't, I'm not mad at how my path turned out because mm-hmm. at every single employment I had, I learned something. I take something from every single employer that I had and I put it towards this. Everything happens for a reason. Right. I mean, our paths are our path. Like, right. I wouldn't change mine either. Yeah. And that's why when I talk to people that want to get into this, I'm like, okay, what are you doing? But like, what are you getting out of what you're doing? Because mm-hmm. if you want to be in beauty school, but you're working at uh, auto mechanic shop. Sure. Like, yes, there's no correlation to those, but you could make one. Like, I don't know. What are you taking from what you're doing right now? And how can you gain that knowledge and sure. try to bridge that? To where you want to go because yeah. if you want to go there you if you take the steps to get there you'll get there right you just got to do it and you got to like tell yourself you can do it i had no idea what i was doing sure when i started <laughs> i just knew i had to do it right um i couldn't keep living the way that i was doing mm-hmm. it was not fun it wasn't rewarding and i like i felt it pulling from my enjoyment out of life absolutely because yeah. i mean that is where you spend the majority of your days at work oh yeah oh yeah so I was like, if I'm going to spend my majority of my day, I might as well do something that I enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and I think a lot of where I'm at came from my struggles. Sure. Like where I was at in life, Mm -hmm. I need, like I literally, my back was against the wall. I needed to do something different. Right. With um, the time that I had, I didn't appreciate as much as I do now. Oh, yeah. With the lack of money that I had, I didn't appreciate (laughs) like where I'm at. Right. Um. And yes, it came with struggles, but it made me a much more patient, much more understanding, much more like positive person than what I was because that was just misery. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm sure you wouldn't change it for the world. No, it was awesome. The ride was awesome. And I'm still on the ride. Like it's never going to end. I was just listening. I don't know if anybody out here listens to the Joe Rogan podcast, but he's got some interesting guests on there. Um, But he interviewed... um, I think it was Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was talking about how he plays the game of life. And like every day he wakes up and that's like, <laughs> that's his game. And he's only competing against himself. And I was like, I really like that analogy. That's a great analogy to do. Like yeah. Every day. Because I'm not competing against like a coworker. I don't have one. Right. Um, I'm not competing against other investors because they're investing in something else. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing that I learned when I got into this. Like I can invest in one niche group. Right. And maybe be the only person that invests in that niche. Sure. Like in that, in that county or in that state. Mm-hmm. You never know. Right. Um, like the people that in are on bigger pockets, they do mobile home parks. Oh. One of the ho- I don't know how many people sure. that do mobile home parks. I don't know. But yeah. he's making it work. So I didn't know that there were so many different facets of it. And that's when you get into it and you start reading more and researching more. You get into like the little nuances of where you can invest. I think what I want to do is I want to find um, like an Airbnb type of situation that I can have out in Oregon, <laughs> yeah. beautiful wine country. I think that would be fabulous. Yeah. But And if you go out, you can find people. And that's the one cool thing about real estate that I've found is that people that do invest in real estate and are in that world, they mm-hmm. always will help you. Right. So if you wanted to get Airbnbs, um, you could go on some sort of forum right. and just message someone like, hey, I see that you're 20 minutes away from me and you do Airbnb looking to get into it. What would do I you, do? Yeah. yeah. Would you grab a cup of coffee with me? Sure. Like they're always willing to do that. Um, awesome. I don't think I've reached out to anybody that hasn't been receptive. That's really nice. In terms of like coaching and just like talking about some things that they do or. Real estate's a great world just in general. Like I think everybody's always been really friendly with me Mm -hmm. and like just welcoming and yeah Yeah. they want to give you their knowledge too yeah it's it for me it's just such a fascinating field nothing is the same um every day is going to be a little bit different and that's the one thing i didn't like about that online um i'm gonna call it online marketing sure but wholesaling sure like i didn't like the transactional Mm -hmm. thing i don't want the product sell it to you boom it's done made five dollars and then 
I may never see you again. Right. Like yeah. It just didn't seem fun. It didn't seem personable. Right. And that's, so, I love working with all of my realtors because everything always changes. Like right. there's always something new and exciting and yeah. Yeah. So that is, that's kind of where I came from. Um, that led me to here. Um, and I'll chalk it up to struggle. Like struggle <laughs> literally got me here. Um, hey man, whatever it took. Yeah. And it paid off. And yeah. I, I don't know how many more times I've read it or heard it from somebody that was like, you don't know what you can do until your back's against the wall. Right. Like literally when you are pushed to do something and you have no other options, mm-hmm. you will do it. Right. Um, yeah. I would. So, and that goes into like my personal life. And this is where the job world and the development kind of comes into my personal life. Cause mm-hmm. like I've tried to stop saying that I can't. Mm-hmm. Cause like I, mean, when we're all kids, everybody's parents says like, don't say you can't cause you can right. like the cliche right. saying, but literally when you want to do something, you will do it. Right. No yeah. matter what it is. For sure. If you need to do something in terms of like, it, it doesn't have to be as extreme as life and death. <laughs> if you need to do something, you will do it. Yeah. Especially if like kids are involved. Or, right. You know, like when you're a parent, like we both are. Yeah. You'll do whatever it takes to take care of your child. Exactly. So you figure it out. Yeah. So where in, pa- in the past, I would always say like, oh, I can't do that. And now like... I do still say it and I try to catch myself from saying it. Sure. Um, but this is where it kind of gets like the alternative to I can't is I don't want to. Right. So to say that to somebody like, I don't really want to do that right now. Like it kind of comes off abrasive. Right. But there's no ill will on it. I just can't tell you that I can't because I could. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the one thing from where I was at with how how stretched thin I was and stressed I was. I appreciate my time more than a dollar. Oh, sure. So much more. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that appreciation until maybe two years ago. Oh, wow. It was always, I just need money. Like, I just need a dollar. Sure. To make ends meet. Yeah. To get home, to sleep, go get a dollar again, go home. And now it's like, my time is like my most precious thing. Sure. Um, And I do covet that and I'm selfish with my time. Do it. Not in a bad way demeaning way sure I'm just some selfish with my time you can makes be. me happier yeah um i can get my reading in um and the other one that i try to catch myself on saying is um i don't have time for that oh yeah because it's not correct everybody has 24 hours yeah everybody has time for everything you just don't want to put your time to it sure so i always try to correct it and say like oh i i don't want to put my time towards that right now right Maybe in the future, but right now I don't want to put my time towards it. Yeah. Because that's my honesty. And it, sure. it, it's not said often. Mm-hmm. So there's been many times where it's like, oh, I don't want to put my time towards that right now. And it catches people off guard. I'm, I'm sure. Like, I don't mean it like disrespectfully. I just don't want to tell you I don't, I, I can't. Right. Because I could. I'm I, sure they're a little slack jawed. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> and that's why I have to explain like, I, it's not rude. That's, I just don't want to lie to you. Yeah. Because like, I can do it and I do have time just don't want to it comes down to want and need yeah so um all of that background and struggle and employment and being stretched thin and stressed like literally got into my personal mindset of Mm -hmm. where i'm at right now and where i i hope to be so um the the real reason that i'm i'm doing what i'm doing i obviously want to create um good living situations for people that can't purchase right now. Okay. So all of my, all the people that rent from me, Mm -hmm. like I would love for them to be able to buy a home. Right. And like, I obviously would, I would help any of them to buy a house, but sometimes their situation is different. I was in the situation. I couldn't buy a house. Right. Couldn't do it. So I also don't want them to have to live in something that is like decrepit or broken or. Oh, for sure. So I'm trying to not only like, give them a good situation to live in. Um, but my personal selfish reason for doing this is when I was in school for psychology, I wanted to go back and get my master's for Mm -hmm. psychology. Um, I wanted to be a sports psychologist. I wanted to work in either professional sports or, um, high level collegiate athletics. Nice. Um, but I need a master's degree. Mm -hmm. So, the time that I had, I could either try and make baseball work or I could go back and get my master's degree in psychology was kind of my pivotal point of what do I do? 
I chose baseball Mm -hmm. instead of education. Sure. And by the time baseball career was done, kid was on the way (laughs) and there was no going back with full time job going back to school. Right. Um, So my hope is that I can create enough wealth to where I can go back, get my master's. That'd be awesome. um, Do either clinical psychology, do sports psychology. Like that's where I, I want to be able to get to a point where my time is now freed up to where I can give it back to mm-hmm. even at the high school level. If sure. I can work with the high school at any capacity or a charity at any capacity, or mm-hmm. if I get a job of it, great. That's like a bonus. But, um, my hope is, is to literally give back and obviously I have some education still to go with it, but, sure. um, that's my true passion. And that's why I said earlier when I, I hope to never interview again, but I probably will interview because my hope is to become self-sustaining enough to where I can go and say, hey, here are the keys to run this. Right. Like, I'm going to be here. You can call me. Here's my number. Right. I'm still going to be involved. But like, I've got something else calling that I need to go do. Right. And hopefully I can get something where um, it's not so much rewarding with me, but I can help other people sure. get to wherever they want to go. Because I think um, there's many different obstacles that hold people back that Mm -hmm. I think that if I was there or if I was able to touch them in some way Mm -hmm. to help them grow, it'd be rewarding for me as well for them. Sure. And that's kind of my overall Mm -hmm. goal of it. So interview might be in the future. Oh boy. We'll see. I mean, the nice thing is you still can have that residual income coming in Mm -hmm. from your rental properties while you're going back to school or right having another career right and that's like the good part of what i'm trying to create mm-hmm. with it so um like i hope to i've got this whole plan about when i grow the business and i get people in to be able to help them purchase their first rental and mm-hmm. they can manage their own rental to see what the taste of that is because sure. um, there's something to be said to go out and get it and then there's something to be like you have ice cream, you pop the top, you have one spoonful. It's going to be hard to like put that back in the freezer yes, without yes, having like 15 or 20 mm, spoons. Yeah, probably. So like to be able to give them the taste of what it is and what they can do, hopefully that grows within them. Mm-hmm. But I also like, and I tell everybody that I work with now, I just, do you want to be here? Or do you not? Like, I don't want you here just for a paycheck. Right. I'd rather like have you call me and like, let's try to figure out a situation that you can get into rather than just coming here. Because if you don't want to be here, you're not going to work right. to your full capacity anyways. Mm-hmm. So like, what are we both doing? For sure. So I'd rather have you want to be here. Mm-hmm. And if it's not rewarding for you, that's okay. Right. Right. I've been in that situation where I've had to go to a job that's not rewarding. I get it. Yeah. So I'm not going to take offense to it. I just want you to be here. You're nicer than I would be. <laughs> so um, I always try to, to to get people in that want to be there and want to learn. And I will help them along the way as much as I can. Just like I reach out to other people, mm-hmm. see how they can help me. It goes back and forth. And that's sure. like the wonderful world of real estate of right. just asking questions. You will never know any, like everything. Right. And that's the one thing through that Bigger Pockets podcast. They always say like, there's no right moment to mm-hmm. start. There's no right moment to do this. There's no correct way to do this. Mm-hmm. You will never know everything. You just have to start. Mm-hmm. Like you just have to do it. Right. Like if you if you don't have money, you can still do real estate. Right. Like you can still analyze. Pro- I don't know how many properties I analyzed before I actually was quote unquote employed in real estate. Sure. Like hundreds. Wow. I would just go on, pull out a house. You run through numbers and you're like, that one doesn't work. Toss it. Next one. And I did that for like better part of maybe eight months. Oh, wow. Just pulling properties and running numbers. That's it. I know. Now you're making me want to go online and like look up properties. Mm, daydreaming. It's addicting. I know. I did the first one. That was my first spoonful of ice cream. <laughs> and I was like, I have to have hundreds more. All right, I, know the I'm, carton. I know what I'm doing when you're leaving today. <laughs> Keeping you in real estate. Yes, absolutely. No, it was... Um, and I remember like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, sun sleeping. And I'm sitting at the computer like analyzing this property and then I wake up in the morning like face down on my laptop. <laughs> like that's 
it just how it was. And I knew that I could still put in the work to learn mm-hmm. even though I wasn't in it. Cause sure. I knew one day I was going to be in it and all that free time I had was being put to something. Right. Now in saying that, like there was sacrifices being done. There mm-hmm. was, um, it kind of helped cause all my college buddies and high school buddies moved out of state. So I didn't have them around. Sure. But I mean, you lose some connections and that stuff's not always fun. Mm-hmm. So you lose some connections with friends and, um, you do have to be more selfish with your time. So you have to give up, which is why, like, do you truly want it? Right. And if, if you truly want it, you'll give up those other things mm-hmm. like watching sports. <laughs> I was at opening day for how many years right. in a row I would watch. My Sundays were booked because I was watching football. Yep. My nights were booked because baseball was on. You sound like my husband. But <laughs> it just, once I started this, like all that stuff was so secondary. Sure. Where now if I have an hour, like mm-hmm. I'll sit down and watch a game. I still love sports. Right. Like I still think athletics is good for kids. Mm-hmm. It's a good entertainment. It's probably one of the better entertainment things you can do. For sure. Um, it's not going to hurt you. It's not unhealthy. <laughs> no, um, it's actually very healthy. <laughs> right. So I appreciate sports for what it is, but it what it just isn't in my hierarchy going to take over mm-hmm. getting my stuff done. Sure. So, um, but yeah, I can't wait for the time where I can sit down and watch a whole game <laughs> and enjoy it. So Absolutely. It'll get there soon. For sure. Um, so yeah, that's like a little tidbit into like, the X's and O's of how I got to where I'm at and where I want to go and where I want to take this thing. And absolutely, um, I'm working right now in, in how I can, and this is coming back again, tying back into your old em- employment or old past uh, experiences right now. I'm trying to develop some way to like, in terms of like proceeds or something, give back to communities mm-hmm. that I have real estate in. Nice. So if I own, properties in four different cities like what is something in each city right that i can break down like okay this property generated x like who can i give that to in order to help that either school or that's awesome nonprofit or something like that mm-hmm. that's what i'm kind of mulling over right now trying to work out things sure and those are things like i don't know if people are doing that already right so like i'm reaching out to people like have you heard of this have you done this mm-hmm. i strike out like some ideas i have just fall just sure. don't work And those are the nine times I lose, (laughs) but then I'm going to strike one on the 10th one and win. Sure. And then I'll run that one. Yep. Cause that's, I mean, to the point of what I'm trying to do is like, I'm trying to obsess about winning. Right. You're going to lose in real estate. Sure. You're going to. Yeah. Uh, I was just listening. It was maybe like two months ago. They were talking about, um, someone was saying, would you rather have somebody who's done a hundred deals and made a million dollars and never lost money on a deal? Or would you have somebody who's had $2 million but has lost money on 10 deals or 100 deals? Mm -hmm. Like, I would still take the $2 million. Yeah, for sure. Why not? Right. It's more money. (laughs) So um, the losses will happen. Yep. I have not lost money on a deal yet, which is great. Knock on wood. Right. But, I mean, I'm aware that it could happen. You never know, Mm -hmm. like, what is going to be around the next corner. But I'm still going to go into it with a winning mentality and try to win it. Sure. That's what I'm going to do. Nice. Now, if somebody wanted to get started in real estate, what would be your number one piece of advice for them? Podcast. Podcast. I. It seems so elementary and so simple, but there is so much out there. I know that people want to get like coaches and, and there's a time for coaches. Like absolutely. And there's a time for like formal education and there's a time for that like structured everything Mm -hmm. and maybe you're a person that needs that and i would say go get the structured learning but if you're somebody that knows they want to do it and can keep themselves accountable to do it and give up and sacrifice the things that if you went to the formal education you you were taking night classes from 5 30 to 10 Mm -hmm. and you can do 5 30 to 10 from your house podcast it's free yeah books ten dollars if you can hold yourself to it if you can't hold yourself to it get the formal yeah Cause you're just going to keep spinning your wheels. Right. So for me that could hold themselves accountable to get the stuff done. I just went podcasts and books mm-hmm. through all of it. Nice. And like 
you could buy the coaches and you could buy the packages and watch the webinars and $200 for this. And right for me, it just, I was like, that's my last resort. If I can't get through this and I'm not understanding this, then I'm going to do that. Right. And there's going to be a time where I, I do get a coach cause I want to take this thing to like the next level. Mm-hmm. And then from there I'll probably need a coach to get to the next level. Cause I don't know those things. Right. Um, and I'm humble enough to say, I don't know those things, but <laughs> Once I get those people that I can talk to, I I will get it. I'm confident that I'll get it. Of course. Never lacking in confidence. No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would say exhaust your free resources. Okay. And see if you like it. Right. There's been a couple people that have said like, oh, I want to jump board. I want to learn about real estate. And I was like, great, great, great. Here's a couple books. Listen to this podcast. That was kind Let me know of you think. that was kind of like me. Like I was like, I want to be a realtor. This is totally what I want to do. And then I was like, I don't want to do real estate. I want to work with realtors yeah. and make things look pretty for them. But yeah. I don't want to sell real estate. That's not up my alley. Right. So it's just it's funny how you can find different avenues within the real estate sector too. Yep. And work with our lovely realtors. Like right. <laughs> right. I mean, the most I I spent on education was. Like the WRA, yeah, to become an agent. That was for sure the most I spent. Yeah. So, um, everything in terms of investing and all that, minimal amount of money. Right. Um, and I was stuck in the rut of what I think, what I imagine, ninety nine percent of people are stuck on, where they're like, I can't buy a duplex because I have no money. Mm-hmm. Like that's always the first obstacle. Right. But there's so many loan packages out there where you can put zero money down. For sure. Or. Especially now with today's interest rates and everything. Yeah. There's <laughs> private lenders everywhere. Mm-hmm. Even though you don't have money, somebody has money. Right. And somebody wants to make more money. Right. But somebody doesn't want to do the work for it. Exactly. You can be the person that makes the work for it. Yeah. So it's not like I, I was this wealthy person before I started this. Mm-hmm. Like when I started, I spent zero of my own money into it. That's nice. So. But you get shot down by investors mm-hmm. and it sucks. Yeah. But you find one investor that believes in you and then you roll with it. Sweet. So um, that was my obstacle of like, I don't have money. So when I went and saw that duplex, I didn't have money. I actually had negative money. <laughs> so. Um, and how can people find investors? You can Google uh, private private real estate investor really yeah i never would have thought of that yeah and you i mean watch out for spams so i'm not telling you to google and click on the first ad you see of course because that's gonna be terrible um but there's i mean i called maybe five bigger national um private money lenders Mm -hmm. before i found one local um and you get to learn about like the first one i called I'd done maybe five minutes of research on what <laughs> private lending was. So I just called them. I was like, how does your system work? And they're like, it's going to be 6% plus four points, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, what are points? <laughs> like I literally was asking like every elementary question I possibly could. And I feel like that customer service woman that was on the other line was like, who, I feel like I'm on some like hidden show right, right. where this is not a real call. Yes. Um, I feel like she probably needed a very large glass of wine that night. Yeah. But again, <laughs> not embarrassed to embarrass myself. Yeah. So I just went in and I was like, Hey, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions to see how this all works. And then after that first phone call, I was like, okay, I've got, I wrote down all my notes of like from that phone call, things I wanted to research. Sure. Then I went online, started researching what all these work. What are the pros? What are the cons? What could happen? Mm-hmm. Like what are the possibilities with it? Um, and then went on to the next one and called the next one. And I had a little bit more knowledge from the last phone call. Sure. And then the second call, I had a little bit more knowledge of the third call. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's not a situation that I th- could think of that you couldn't get started, mm-hmm. but there's going to be obstacles. Right. I still have obstacles. So you just have to move past them. Yeah. An obstacle is going to be there, but how are you going to get over it? Right. That's really the question is asking how mm-hmm. rather than just like, oh, I don't have money. Oh, I don't have time. Right. Well, things are too hectic. <laughs> if you had one piece of advice to give a future realtor or a future investor or a future somebody who wants to get into real estate, what would your one piece of advice be? Work for free. Work for free. Work for free. 
you will gain so much knowledge working with somebody, not asking anything in return, just on off hour stuff, work for free. Okay. It sounds so dumb. I did it for three people. Just work for free. I was like, hey, I, I'm just interested in what you're doing. I'd love to help you out. What do you have? And they're not going to turn you down. Right. Of course. I mean, so, what? I mean, we've got one guy. Um, he's coming up. He's in a high school cohort. So he helps us like build and do back office stuff. But he gets high school credits. Oh, cool. So he comes for four hours a day. He doesn't. He's interested in real estate. Doesn't know what he's doing. Hasn't done anything in it. But he's super interested in it. Awesome. So he contacted me. He's like, hey, is this something like, do you have open spots for me to come help? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. So like he is literally doing what I was doing, but years before I did it. Right. Just working for, I'll say quote unquote free because he's getting credits. So sure. um, he's getting the education out of it. But yeah, working for free, if you can sacrifice a few hours, people will love to have you. Mm -hmm. And when you're immersed in a culture of it, and this is like the whole thing about uh, like online school mm-hmm. so like i get its effectiveness and i understand i'm taking the whole corona thing out of it <laughs> like because that's its own thing but i'm thinking about it in a cultural thing yeah so how are you going to create a culture to like fully immerse yourself in education at home because right. you're at school for for like six hours a day mm-hmm. i think it was right so are you at six hours a day putting your mu- like your head down in a book or in education to get your six hours of education in that day. And I feel like it's harder when you're not in that, that little culture. I don't know. I went to school online, um, a couple of different times and I personally loved it. Yeah. Um, my son's in school online right now. Mm-hmm. They don't get much done, but he's only in third grade. So, right. And that's, I mean, my son's in 5k. Yeah. So like probably could do it at home. Maybe. Right. But like, I just think education is so important Mm -hmm. that I was like, I want you to be in the culture of it so that you can see like that is just like, that's how important it is. Right. So like, there's nothing better than like, if you want to learn Chinese, get dropped off in China. Right. Learn by doing. You're going to learn it. Right. Learning by doing rather than learning by reading. Yeah. If you want to get into real estate or if you want to get into uh, online wholesaling or if you want to get into boat sales. Or if you want to sell shoes, you're going to learn most by being in it. Mm-hmm. And sure. if you have two, three hours a day to spare to go help out somebody that does that stuff, not only are you going to learn like the industry, but you're going to learn all of their background. You're going to learn like their failures, their successes, how things work, why we don't do it this way, why we mm-hmm. do it this way. Like all those things that you're not going to read in a book right? because they're so direct and personal to that one like little industry or that person or that business. Mm-hmm. And it costed you three hours a day. Right. Like there's so many free resources out there. For sure. That you can do it. So. Awesome. Easy answer. Work for free. It'll pay off. And you don't have to do it for years. Right. Right. Like a couple months. And then if you don't like it, then at least you were in it and you realize you didn't like it. Right. Rather than spending thousands of dollars to learn about it. That's very, very true. So. Very true. I've had people that wanted to get into like auto mechanics. And I was like, okay, there's a mom and pop auto dealer like right down the street right asking if you can intern for him sure why would i do that well then do you truly want to get into it right because like if if you don't want to do it for free and like learn about it do you truly want to do it right because is that where your passion is like where is your passion find that Mm -hmm. because my passion was real estate so i was like yeah i'll work for free because i'm yeah i don't get a paycheck but i get so much education so much knowledge which excelled and like projected me like way farther than if I just like sat back and tried to do it on my own. Sure. It just wouldn't happen. Right. So. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for telling us how you got started in this business. It's super intriguing. The very fascinating world of real estate. Absolutely. Very intriguing. Super interesting. And hopefully we can inspire some of you guys to maybe uh, yeah. take, the, take the leap of faith. Yeah. And like I said, I don't. I'm not saying this because I just said work for free. That was not my (laughs) plug to like come work for me for free. Um, But if you do have questions or if anybody is listening to this that is interested in real estate and wants to get involved, um, if I can't help you, I know somebody who can. Um, You can always reach out, even if it's just like a a maybe thing. Sure. Reach out. I'm always open. 
Um, I will pay you the same respect that people have paid me when I was inquiring about how to get into it. Sure. Um, I never want to like leave that mindset. Right. So Natasha, if I ever do leave that mindset, you have the right to call me out on it. Oh, for sure. I totally will. So um, if anybody is, is feeling a little bit like it is an interest, you can absolutely reach out. I'm always available to... I mean, I got back to you like within the first hour. Or the or day. Six. <laughs> I'm really bad with texting. But if you email Natasha, we'll definitely get back to you. Uh, yeah. She's great with that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, definitely reach out. Always open to help. Always willing. I, I enjoy helping. I'm once a coach, always a coach. Love it. So that's where I'm at with it. That's a super great quality to have. Trying to keep it. <laughs> Stressful at times, but I love it. Awesome. So, yeah, that's a little bit a little background on on how I got to where I'm at and why I got to where I'm at. That's kind of the main thing is why. Sure. Why I got here. Um, love it. Yeah. Can't wait for it to continue. Yay. But I know it was a shorter episode today, um, but we felt like we should kind of give some some reasoning and kind of like intent to what this podcast is about. Mm -hmm. Um, We want to put knowledge out there about real estate, but we also want to inspire people to like understand the benefits of it and why we should, why we should care about it, I guess. Right. Not like you're going to quit your day job and become this real estate mogul. I don't, I'm not going to push that on anybody, but if you own a house or if you rent and you have questions about how that whole world works and if you own a home and wondering how like the mortgage thing works and, what you're getting from owning real estate. Sure. We just want to throw those, that information out free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. That's kind of it. So stay tuned for more. Um, We're going to be having some more um, contractors coming up here in a bit, but otherwise that wraps up episode six, the fascinating episode six. So we'll be back for episode seven next week, Friday. Yep. Post on Monday. Post on Friday. Post on Friday. I knew that. <laughs> this is how much I love technology right here. Oh, yes. That's what you <laughs> no. have me for. Right, 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 right. Like I said, email Natasha. <laughs> um, but thanks for listening. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your, if you're listening to it today, enjoy your weekend. If not, enjoy your day. Do something special. Have we'll fun. see you next week. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys.